What's up everyone, my name is Luca and you're watching my first year on T. So this week we're talking about how we realized we were trans. Personally, I don't really like the question, how did you realize you were trans because I realized I was a boy as young as I could remember. I've always known that I was a boy. I didn't realize that trans was the word that explained how I felt inside. I didn't have the vocabulary to explain that until about two years ago. I'm gonna abbreviate this story as much as possible because it's a pretty long story if I go into detail about it, but I'll do an FTM timeline on my channel, so keep an eye out in the next couple weeks on there. Link is in the description. Two years ago is the first time I heard somebody use the term trans. I heard it used in more of like, to describe trans women, Whereas I didn't really know that trans men were a thing. So two years ago in the fall, I met the first person that I realized was a trans man. And I had known him for, uh, we were working closely together for a couple months before somebody actually told me that he was trans and I had no idea. And I didn't really know that you could be a trans man. It just didn't click in my mind. It wasn't something that I understood. After I met him, we became pretty close friends, but I didn't really want to fully understand what he was going through because I knew that if I did, I would have to deal with that myself and I wasn't ready for it. The next show I did was Rocky Horror Show and I talked a little bit about how I did drag and how I felt euphoric and realized that that was one of the big turning points in my um, realizing my identity. So after that, I, I decided to be more gender neutral and I uh, still went by she, her pronouns, but I just saw myself as gender neutral or gender fluid. Fast forward to a year later, I had been getting more and more dysphoric, didn't know what that word was or what it meant. I just knew that I was feeling more and more uncomfortable in my own body and I was disassociating from all of my friends and family and I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was staying inside, I wasn't going out much, I wasn't doing anything to benefit me because I just wasn't comfortable and I didn't understand why. In my senior year of high school, I went to an alternative school, so I only went for one class and it was just one hour a week. It was Mondays from 8 to 9 a.m. There were like three other people in the classroom, including the teacher, and Without all the social pressure and the, the norms that I had to confine to, I allowed myself to kind of delve into how I felt as a person and how I felt in my identity. This is when I realized that there was more to the story of being trans to me than I was ready to accept. So I started watching my friend's YouTube channel, the first guy that I met that I realized was trans, and I had put it off for a really long time because I just wasn't ready. But I started watching his YouTube channel and through the recommended videos, I found the My First Binder videos, and I started watching those. There was one video, and I can't remember who it was, but uh, this guy got his first binder and he put it on, and he turned to the side, and he looked at himself in the mirror, and he started crying. And when he started crying, I started crying too, because I understood that feeling that he was having, and I had never even binded my chest, but for years I had gone braless because I just didn't, I, Anything that accentuated my chest, I had nothing to do with. I didn't want anything to do with my chest, and I tried to wear baggy clothes and hide it, and I didn't realize it was because I was feeling dysphoric. And my dog is coming, so I have to go with him. Your Highness. So I didn't realize that dysphoria was why I was so uncomfortable with my chest and had been for my entire life. Ever since I started growing a chest and I couldn't fit into my muscle t-shirts anymore, I was unhappy and uncomfortable with my body. So when I graduated, um, and I waited until I, I was sure I didn't have to go to school anymore before I sat down and allowed myself to kind of research and deal with this. Once I sat myself down and allowed myself to watch these videos and do a ton of research because I'm an all or nothing person, if I'm going to tell the world that this is who I am, I have to be a thousand percent sure and I want to know everything. I research anything I'm interested in and I have to know everything about it before I make a decision on how I feel about it. I researched a ton, I watched a ton of YouTube videos, I read studies, I did all sorts of stuff, I talked to my friends that were trans and I came to the conclusion that yeah, I, I, this is the word that describes how I felt my entire life. And then I didn't want to deal with it. 
I was too scared to deal with it. It was something that I didn't want that to be the answer. And I tried so hard to like work around it in my head and use some other kind of vocabulary. And I realized that that was never going to work because this is who I am. I came out to the entire world via a Facebook post and I'll put it here. And after I came out to everybody, I got an overwhelming amount of support, um, aside from my biological father. I've never told him, and I don't plan to, because he's severely transphobic and homophobic, and I'm not going to waste my time trying to get him to accept me. It's not worth my time. He wasn't really in my life that much anyway, so not a big deal to me. And I've got a ton of people that make up for what he wasn't there to do for me, so... But after I came out to everybody, I was feeling so much better with myself. I started living full-time as Luca and going by he, him pronouns, and I don't regret it at all. The only thing I regret is not having come to terms with it sooner. So I started hormone replacement therapy in January, on January 5th, and I am almost three months on testosterone now, and I could not be happier. I hopefully will be able to get my top surgery sometime this fall, if everything works out. I get my legal name changed on Friday, which is in two days, and then hopefully I'll try to figure out the legal issue with my gender marker. I talked about that earlier on the channel. Link in the description if you want to check out that video. After I get my top surgery and my legal name and gender marker change and everything like that, I mean, for me, that is about as far as I want my transition to go. I don't plan on getting bottom surgery. It's not something that causes me extreme dysphoria, and currently the options just aren't something that I'm comfortable with going through. I don't like the options. I don't like the results, and they work for some people. They're not bad results, but personally for me, it's just I know that it would make me feel more dysphoric if I went ahead and got bottom surgery with the two options available now. So I'm not going to put myself through that because I know it wouldn't make me happier. That's kind of how I came to terms with coming out to myself and accepting myself for who I am and realizing that there was a word that described how I, how I felt my entire life. There was vocabulary in this world to explain to me and to everybody else who I am. That is how I kind of figured everything out, I guess. Thank you for watching and I really hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, drop them down below and I'll answer them as quick as I can. If nobody's reminded you recently, you're worthy and you deserve good. Bye. I'm getting darker facial hair right here and right here. Like not, it's not like a lot darker, but I'm getting a lot more of it too, which is really weird. And the acne, my God, the acne, ugh.